thanks for coming to our AGM. Um, I'll just read a little prepared thing here. Welcome and thank you for joining our 2023 OPAC general meeting. My name is Emily Hammond and I'm OPAC's general uh, board chair. I was inspired to join OPAC after seeing the amazing work they were doing in our cancer community. My own son Griffin was diagnosed with rhabdomyosarcoma in 2011 when he was 22 months old. Since then, I worked hard to raise awareness and support for childhood cancer in Ontario, and I am honored to serve and give back to this organization who has helped us so much. This year marks 28 amazing years of OPAC supporting childhood cancer families in Ontario. We were founded in 1995 on the principle of parents supporting parents, and we remain committed to supporting and empowering families. OPAC continues to provide support to families through our unique parent liaison program, which offers peer-to-peer -peer psychosocial support and information navigation so that parents know they are never alone on this overwhelming journey. Our parent liaisons offer both in-person and virtual support in Ontario childhood cancer families. Uh, since our last AGM in June 2022, 130 new families have been supported through OPAC. That's huge. Um, this is in addition to the currently 1,119 existing member families that we continue to support. In this past year, we've also been able to provide families with support, including resuming in-person, in-hospital parent liaison services at SickKids and Credit Valley Hospital, hospital parking with expanded frequency of reimbursements, grocery and gas gift cards, and a new hospital meal voucher program. Local community support, including community-based parent support groups, both in person and online, event ticket opportunities through our partnership with Kids Upfront, monthly educational speaker series on a variety of topics of interest to childhood cancer families, including bereavement, sibling support, AYA support, parenting, and so much more. For the year ahead, we are looking forward to reaching more families to support, doing social events for families, presenting new speakers, continuing to raise awareness in September Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and beyond, and more. We would also like to thank the funding received through our charitable gaming events at the Kennedy Road Charitable Gaming Association in Scarborough, which supports our key uh, parent liaison program. OPAC is not funded by the government nor by the hospitals. We continue to seek further sources of funding to ensure OPAC sustainability this year and beyond, including from foundation grants, third-party fundraisers, and donations from generous individuals and businesses in the communities. I would like to personally commend the staff and volunteers of OPAC, as well as the OPAC families themselves, for encouraging and supporting each other in so many ways through this pandemic. Thank you so much. Emily. So we can move on to the AGM financials and Danitha can report on those. Thank you, Sarai. Thanks, Emily. Um, are, do you want me to share the uh, Sarai or is that uh, let me share not this. necessary? Let me see if I can share the screen here so everybody can see. These are... I think this was it. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So um, we have our, our revenues and just focus on the um, items that stand out. Um, our donations have gone up significantly as a release of funds, as a result of the release of funds. Um, and we've uh, seen another increase in the charitable gaming that Emily mentioned as well, which has been um, really helpful towards overall revenues. In terms of expenses, since we're back in these sites more frequently, um, you'll see that the expenses have uh, increased across the board as it relates to program expenses, travel, and uh, salaries. Um, looking at our balance sheet, our total assets are at 424,021.99, uh, and uh, our total liabilities um, is, is, a, is a, co a completion, like an addition of the entire thing. And um, I think maybe... Um, the current liabilities is significant. We are we're at nothing, so we're in a we're in a pretty good position. I don't know, Sarai, if you want to add anything else. Yeah, thank you, Danita. So internally restricted that you'll see here. These are 
uh, ones that are programs like um, Million Dollar Smiles, Comfy Cases, Tears Mean Love. They're internally restricted for those specific funds only. They're not part of OPAC's general operating. Uh, so that's the amount of $119,600 on there. And our assets are our liabilities. We don't have other assets other than cash. So um, that's pretty much it for the financials. If anyone has any questions. Oh, Emily has a question. Sorry. Um, Sarai, right, can you repeat it? Because the angle. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, so Emily was asking uh, about the GIC. So the assets that are currently there, the 424, that includes $138,000 from what we, the yes. funds that were released, and that will be invested into GICs. It hasn't gone out yet because it's not done yet, um, but that will come out of there as well. Um, yeah, so we still haven't, they're not reflected, the, the GICs. It's not done yet. They haven't been done yet, right? So they're still included in that total, but they'll be taken out. When it is. Oh, Emily was saying instead of putting 138 in the GICs, maybe putting 150 or some more amount since we have. But I'm I'm not sure because I'm always nervous about the cash. You know, like we still need like that money will be locked in. I mean, we could take it out, but I'd rather just keep it in there just in case because our financial situation can change. You know, <laughs> every month pretty much. So, but it's a good. Question. But uh, I'd rather just keep that in there because that's what we can we afford. Can yeah, yeah. If we could raise more, then we could put we can add more into GICs and stuff like that. But for now, I think or reinvest the current one hundred thirty eight plus whatever we we earn. Um, I think for now we'll just do the one thirty eight. Keep that in there, and then we'll see maybe how yeah. things are after that. How we can manage with what we have left over. So yeah, any questions, financials, no? Okay, so the next thing is just uh, confirming the officials who will be, or the directors for this year, 2023 now to 24. So our fiscal ends, it's from, uh, ends on May 31st, 2024. So these are the board confirmed until then. People can drop off anytime, but for now, these are the, uh, the board members we have. We have as our chair, Emily. Hammond, our secretary, Maya Stern, treasurer, Janice the Bro, um, directors, our staffy, Afandoulis, Helen Robertson, Lisa Skinner, Anna Lopez, Michaela McLean, Claudia Kugelmas, Dino Radakia, and Evelyn Wilson. That's our board for this year. So any questions? Opening it up for questions, comments? I guess this is a pretty quick one. <laughs> so you don't have too many, but uh, okay. So that would wrap up our AGM. If you come up for uh, are wanting to join again for the speaker, that's at noon. Uh, we have Laura and Jordana here from Eupopolis speaking about sibling support. And that's another link that I sent out as well. Um, otherwise, that's it. And we'll see you at our next board meeting in September for our board members. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye.